Hi everyone, I'm Tobias. I'm going to be presenting to you some news and the results of our challenges of the BDD 100K dataset. And um, first of all, for those who don't know BDD 100K yet, it is a large scale diverse driving dataset. Uh, consists of 100,000 dash cam videos, which are 40 seconds long each. Um, we provide a monocular video stream uh, in addition to GPS and IMU data. Uh, we have a very broad uh, geographic distribution in this data set, as well as a rich set of annotations, as you can see here on the left. Um, also, we have a lot of scene variations. So we cover city streets, highways, residential areas, countryside, different time of day, different weather, and even different seasons. And um, since this data set has been first published at CVPR 2020, a uh, lot of things have happened. First of all, uh, annotations. We revised the annotations for semantic segmentation and the image tagging as well as uh, we have been adding human post labels. Um, the website and toolkit have been completely revised. So we have a new website. We have updated documentation, updated toolkit, and new leaderboards on eval.ai. Uh, also now we have a very comprehensive model zero with pre trained models for nine tasks. And first of all, human pose annotations. Uh, we annotated 14,000 uh, images with 18 body key points for all of the pedestrians visible in those images. So if you're working on human posts, definitely check it out. Uh, then the website and the toolkit. Uh, first of all, um, we have now a new website where you can explore the data and the labels. Uh, you can find the documentation there and the links to the leaderboards, model zoo, uh, the toolkit and a discussion forum if you have questions. And the toolkit itself provides now evaluation for all of the uh, tasks in the data set, visualization for all of the labels, as well as conversion to common data formats such as COCO. And the model zoo, we have now more than 300 models in this model zoo, uh, compromising all of the tasks that you can see here. So definitely a lot to play around with. And if you have a model that works on BDN uh, contributions are also where we welcome. Um, so this is what we have uh, done so far, but uh, are we done yet? Well, currently we are actually working on expanding the data set in three ways. First of all is data. We are in the process of gathering new sequences, which is very exciting for us. Uh, we are in the process also of extending the existing annotations with more labels for MOT and MOTS, as well as for more tasks such as panoptic MOT. And also uh, we are in the process of gathering a complete new set of annotations based on 3D matrix scale reconstructions. And for that, I would like to show you a quick example. So here on the left, you can see the video, um, uh, video input stream. And on the right, you can see uh, the corresponding point cloud. And you can see that on this like wide road, the uh, point cloud is actually quite dense. And now when the car will turn right, you can see that the density will slightly decrease. And also what you can observe is that uh, we filter out the dynamic objects that are in front of the ego car here uh, in the reconstruction. So now the car turns and you can see that the density is slightly lower. So why is this the case? Um, well, we actually uh, do reconstruct these sequences not only with the data from one sequence, but we, because we have the GPS, we can actually um, locate multiple sequences that uh, go along the same road to increase both the density and the quality of the reconstructions. Once we have then these camera-based reconstructions, we can use the GPS data to scale them uh, to the correct metric scale. Um, okay, so. These uh, were the updates, and now let's come uh, to our challenges uh, at this workshop. Um, this year, we had two tasks uh, that we hosted challenges for. Uh, first is MOT, the first is uh, the second one, sorry, is MOTS. Um, we had 26 participating teams across those two challenges with more than 200 submissions to our evaluation servers. And here also big shout out to my colleagues, C1 and Thomas, and also Professor Fisher Yu uh, in helping organizing these challenges. And now it's my honor to uh, announce the winner of the MOT challenge. It's Carl Huang et al. from Lenovo Research. Congratulations on that. And the winner of the MOTS challenge is Xiaolong Song from, from, at, from uh, Huawei North Arc Lab. Uh, also congratulations on that achievement. Okay, and last but not least, quick announcement um, at ECSV 2022, at the second workshop on self-supervised learning for next generation industry level autonomous driving. Uh, we will host even uh, more challenges for so new challenges with more than 
$10,000 in prices. So stay tuned for that. And now uh, I'll give it to the winners and uh, we'll hear their uh, solutions. First up is the MOT challenge winner. Hi, thank you for the introduction. My name is Betok Pan Le Dipon Pan. And our team member is uh, Carl Huang, Zhou Wang, Xi Gang Wang, Feng Sheng, Jun Xia, and Bing Xuan Sun. We are from Lenovo Research. Today, I would like to present our solution for PDD MOT challenge. Our company, Lenovo, has been recognizing the standardized mass computing device, and we want to expand our horizon in the the vehicle computing area. So Renault Research created a smart cockpit team and autonomous driving algorithm team to achieve this goal. And this ESCS 2022, we present the a smart cockpit solution demo. And for our algorithm team, we are very honored to be part of the PDD challenge this year. And this is our our presentation today, I would like to start with our framework, which has the two main modules, which is uh, object detection and object tracking. And then we will show our experimental setting and result and some of our journey in this competition. For our framework, we follow on the tracking by detection paradigm. So in each image frame, we detect the object and then we send the uh, object body model information to, to find the matching in between the image uh, consecutive frame to get the final object tra trajectory. For the object detection, we apply CBNET to architecture, which group a multiple identical backbone and also integrate the high and the low level of vision to improve the object detection performance. In this competition, we use the slide transformer backbone with the FPN net and HTC detection head. And for the body mark loss, we use generalized uh, intersection over union loss with the multi-threshold of NMS. Our first try on the object detection with this data set is not so success. And we face the data imbalance problem. From the training data set statistics, we found that the car instance is pretty far from the other category, especially the train, motorcycle, bicycle, and rider. So we tried several methods to improve our result including the weighted cross entropy, class balance data set, and multi threshold NMS. And we finally improve our performance and get the final detection performance as shown in the table. And after we get the detection results, we apply the bytrack solution, which is a uh, tracking bias associating every detection box, not only the, the high score one. And the biotrack will be grouped the det detection box into the several category, including the high score detection box, low score detection box, and quantitative box. And we can apply IOU and re-identification similarity metric to each association. And from our experiment, we found that applying the re-identification gets the best result in all the three categories. And for the over re-identification, we use the Unitrack solution, which leverages the SIMCRRV2 operating model and also have the by-class Hungarian matching as uh, association algorithm. The system Similarity measurement is based on the cosine similarity by the fisherman. And the result of the REID module will be fit back to the by track association process as mentioned in the previous 
page. And this is our process of the this competition experiment. We start with the YOLO X detector and the all simi IOU similarity metric for the by track. We we use this one as our baseline model, and then we try to change the combination between re-identification and uh, IOU in the by track. And finally, we can get the best result with all of the re-identification as the as a similarity metric in the by track. And we use the CBNet B2 to improve our detection performance. After that, we add the bi-class Hungary machine and the multi-threshold NMS to handle uh, of each object category in the detection and the tracking. And finally, we do some parameter by tuning and do some post processing to increase the performance and get the final results in the validation set. And this is our final experimental setting and the results. We use the same data augmentation in training and testing, which is a random flip in a scaling, padding, and normalize. And for the detection and tracking, most of the parameter we follow the baseline model from the CBNet B2 and the track by track. And we add the NMS score threshold for each object category. And for the tracking, we set the threshold for initial tracking equal to the 0 0.85. And for the detection, uh, detection box score threshold, for the higher score threshold equal to 0 0.84. And for the low score threshold is equal to 0 0.3. The score lower than the 0 0.2 will be classified as a TTT box. And in the table show our final result in the validation set and the test set. And our final mean MOTA for the test set is 43.95. In summary, uh, our framework is based on the tracking by detection which we use the CBNAV2 as our detector by track for, for tracking and the unit tag solution for our re-identification. Uh, even though we get the pretty good result in the MOTA, but after we compare our result with another method, we found that our ID switching number is pretty high. So in the future work, we will focus more on the data association, especially the motion crew, to improve our performance. And this is all of my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. In the interest of time, uh, let's move on with the MOTS uh, winner presentation. Thank you very much. OK, I'm Xiaolin Song, and uh, uh, I'm from Huawei North Asia Clive. I'm a Beline Fong. And I will introduce my solution for uh, MOTIS challenge. Okay, first, uh, introduce the baseline method and PCAN. Uh, uh, PCAN generates the space time uh, prototypes and uh, use the cross attention to retrieve. Uh, rich information from past three, uh, and learn uh, uh, constructive uh, from foreground and background prototypes in both space-time dimension, and uh, we will reach it uh, by uh, tracking by detection and uh, instant segmentation framework uh, because that uh, the detector is is is, is important and. Uh, uh, the first season and mask season in baseline could be not performed well. Uh, and uh, most uh, temporary information could be aggregated in the detector di directly. And uh, our multi and, and, and in this uh, challenge, 
uh, I follow the tracking by detection framework, which is easy and efficient to, uh, to train the network. Uh, I try to optimize in the following parts. One is the uh, spatial detection and segmentation accuracy, uh, especially, especially the accuracy of mask prediction. Another is temporal alignment for tracking. Uh, in details, I have modified the exist network with a different update module. Uh, for instance, uh, backbone uh, detector head and mask head specifically, and uh, the temporal alignment module. Uh, for feature extraction, I have tried for backbone screen transformer. Uh, and the results will be next. Uh, due to the tracking bed detection framework as previous last said, uh, I had tried to optimize the detector first uh, in order to get the better detection results. Uh, firstly, I have, choose the, I have chosen the cascade as in as a bounding box based detector uh, because it's easy to train with sufficient performance. And then I chose I, uh, the sparse as which which is is which is query based like Dieter or the Bumble Dieter, which are the transformer like architectures with a, a query decoder. And I think that the query based architecture is potentially uh, efficient for detection and tracking. Uh, specifically, because the prediction is the instance mask format in the MLTS task. Uh, I try to use a more useful mask head for uh, accurate mask generation. Uh, HTZ and uh, query inst as the mask prediction head uh, from Cascade RCN and Sparse RCN respectively. Uh, notice that both methods utilize the multi-stage arch arch architecture uh, in, in, in detector head. So I involve the multi-stage multi mass fusion for them and refine mass from different stages. In addition, another mask refinement trick is the uh, spatial mask refinement module, uh, which is modified from refine mask. It's a boundary aware refinement operation, and it could could be it could pre predict uh, the detailed mask with accurate boundaries. Uh, consider that the temporal dynamics in, in time dimension, the temporal alignment is, is used to feel, it's used for fusing uh, different frame features to optimize the current IOU features for, from, refer from references. Now here are the implementation details for training. Uh, the MM detection framework is utilized and the network is trained uh, following, following PKN. Uh, also, uh, uh, because the PKN is, 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 is good enough. Yeah. Uh, also, there, there are the results of uh, baseline with different backbones, uh, and the results are obtained from the test script in the source code. Yeah. And the swim B uh, with image. Imanet 1K pre-trained is chosen for the next experiments. And here are the, the results in different schemes. Uh, the cascade ASEAN based, uh, based method uh, could get the uh, best performance during the challenge time. It's efficient to convergence. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's efficient to converge and easy to uh, acquire the sufficient uh, results and the performance of the query based method is is so close to the cascade one. Uh, once more, in the last row of the table, uh, I have retrained this scheme after after the challenge and got much better uh, validation results than the cascade one. Uh, it may be better in the in the test side, and the results will be submitted to the evaluator server. Okay, on the other hand, the temporal alignment, uh, the temporal alignment scheme uh, doesn't work well because this, this scheme would cost more GPU memory and, and the batch size is only the half of uh, other schemes. 
uh, so the performance is not comparable with the, with the lower batch size. Okay. Uh, compare with the cascade assign based scheme. The query based scheme uh, uh, utilize spatial refinement module would predict the predict the results with more details and the clear boundaries. Uh, a both method could uh, may got may, may may get the false negative and miss one some. Uh, objects in similar color of environment. And the, the detector also needs to optimize with different illumination and, and the road schemes. Now here are the results of tracking and segmentation. Uh, the, the, the ID of uh, objects are maintained by here. Uh, however, due to the unbalanced data, the, the crowded pedestrian and some small objects will not be detected uh, or will cause uh, the ID switch. And it's one of the problem to solve in the future. Okay, in some way to improve the performance of uh, MOTS, the accurate detector is essential and the mass refine module could predict the mass refinely with the uh, sufficient boundaries. Uh, in addition, here are some paths to do in the future. Uh, first, uh, to improve the efficient efficiency of the entire network because because it uh, because the large uh, backbone uh, temporal alignment and uh, spatial mass refinement is is too large uh, would would cost too much GPU memory, uh, which are not e efficient for tracking and. And, and and then to aggregate uh, the temporary information in past frames to refine the, the current frame. Uh, I'm looking forward to the MOT and MOTS method with the transformer-like arch architecture with queries. Uh, maybe they, they, will got, they, will, they will get the better and robust, perform, robust performance as a joint uh, tracking and detection framework. Thanks. This is my presentation. And any questions? So, if there are no immediate questions, then uh, I would uh, end the session for BDD and give over to Henrik.